Mariah Carey's ex-husband Tommy Mottola says she needs to fire her team. Mariah Carey's ex-husband, Tommy Mottola, believes that she should fire her advisors and hire more seasoned and respected professionals, after her much-criticized New Year's Eve performance. Mota weighed in, on Carey's appearance, at Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest suggesting that she should take some of the blame for the issues with the performance, but only for choosing the wrong support team. The 67-year-old music executive believes that Carrie is, arguably the greatest pop voice to come along in the last three decades, and that she could have avoided the embarrassment that night if her technical people paid more attention to all of it so that there was no chance of that happening. Describing the hero singer as a global icon and a treasure with incredible talent, Motola, admits the situation, could have happened to anyone, but says it should never have happened in the first place. He also thinks Gary shouldn't participate in her currently running reality TV show Mariah's World. My only advice is that she should hire more seasoned and respected professionals to surround her and help her with her career. He wrote in a letter to the New York Post's page 6 column. Mota believes that the docu-series does absolutely nothing for her integrity, her credibility, or her massive talent. Carey made global headlines with her headlining set, which went downhill as midnight approached. She began to sing hit songs Emotions and We Belong Together, but then everything seemed to go wrong. The superstar vocally stumbled through her short set failing to sing for most of it despite a pre-recorded track of her songs playing in the background. Carrie was apparently unable to hear through her in-ear monitor, and she removed it completely. The pop star eventually abandoned singing and lip-syncing as she grew frustrated, addressing the crowd, I am trying to be a good sport here. Both camps deflected blame and presented explanations for what went wrong during the New Year's Eve performance. Carrie's representative Nicole Perna blamed technical difficulties, and in an interview with Billboard she said Dick Clark Productions hampered Carrie's performance. She was not winging this moment and took it very seriously, Perna told Billboard, a shame that production set her up to fail. Perna said Carrie's earpiece wasn't working and she flagged the issue to the production team, but was told it would be okay when she got on stage. However, that was not the case and they were again told that her piece was not working, Berna said, instead of endeavoring to fix the issue so that Mariah could perform, they went live. Dick Clark Productions issued its own statement claiming, to suggest that Dick Clark Productions, as producer of music shows including the American Music Awards, Billboard Music Awards, New Year's Rock and Eve and Academy of Country Music Awards, would ever intentionally compromise the success of any artist is defamatory, outrageous and frankly absurd. Gary's ex-husband believes, she should take a step back, think carefully and figure out what to do next. Mottola kept going in his letter, saying, most certainly none of these issues or problems ever existed with her in her early days at Sony for the first 10 years when she skyrocketed to global superstardom, Motola was the Sony music chairman who helped guide Carrie from 19-year-old backup singer to the top of the music industry. Carrie's current manager, Stella Balachnikov, reportedly fired back, telling Page Six, Really? Tommy is a relic. Did he give you that statement from a rotary phone? Carrie began to date Motola while recording her third studio album, Music Box, and married him on June 5, 1993. Their relationship began to deteriorate from growing creative differences on her albums. On May 30, 1997, the couple announced their separation, with their divorce finalized by the time he remarried on December 2, 2000. Over the years, Carey has characterized Motola as a controlling spouse, who would cloister her in a mansion she later called, Sing Sing, even as she became the world's most popular performer, according to Billboard.